And of course, our top focus on World DNA India's long-standing ties with Canada have hit a major roadblock. This after, of course, as we mentioned earlier, Canada accused the Indian government of potentially being involved in the murder of a Sikh separatist leader. Exactly. Now, Truro's comments have really come as a shocker in Canada as well. Both sides engaged in a diplomatic tiff by expelling top diplomats. New Delhi has done the same. Ottawa has done the same. New Delhi rejected Ottawa's claims as absurd and motivated. Now, both these words have deeper meaning, of course. Hours later, Trudeau took a seemingly softer stance on the matter, saying that right. he does not want to provoke India. He really backtracked fast. Right. The government of India needs to take this matter with the utmost seriousness. We are doing that. We are not uh, looking to um, provoke or escalate. We are simply laying out the facts as uh, we understand them and uh, we want to work with the government of India uh, to lay everything clear and to ensure uh, that there is proper... One of the things that is so important today uh, is that India and the government of India take seriously uh, this matter. Um, it is extremely serious and it has uh, far-reaching consequences in international law and otherwise. Now, the tensions have strained ties between India and Canada to the extent that trade agreements have been put on hold. Both nations have paused talks on a proposed trade deal. Canada has postponed a trade mission that it had planned for October. Absolutely, Shivan, you're right. Uh, Canadian Prime Minister did try to take a U-turn and present a softer stance. That's, however, done little to ease the tensions over. It's also updated. Canada, in fact, it's updated travel advisory for its citizens traveling to India now. Ottawa has asked its citizens to avoid all travel to the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir due to what it called the unpredictable security situation. And it has, in fact, also cautioned its citizens traveling to India-Pakistan border areas. Now, several nations from the Five Eyes Intelligence Bloc, of which Canada is also a part, have reacted to the serious allegations made by Trudeau. The UK and United States have been the first to officially address claims made by Trudeau. UK Foreign Secretary James Cleverly reiterated the seriousness of Canada's claims. However, the UK has maintained that its trade relations with India remain unaffected with these developments. The White House, it's also raised concern over claims of Indian agents being involved in the murder on Canadian soil. National Security Spokesperson Adrian Watson said, I'm quoting, we are deeply concerned about the allegations referenced by Prime Minister Trudeau earlier today. We remain in regular contact with our Canadian partners. It is critical that Canada's investigation proceed and the perpetrators be brought to justice. And according to a source-based Reuters report, Canada worked very closely with the United States on intelligence in the case. The report added that the evidence in Canada's possession proving India's link to the murder would be shared in due course. The sudden dip in Canada, India-Canada ties, it was also reflected in other domains. Indian firm Boat withdrew sponsorship for India music tour of Canada-based singer Shubh. Now, the singer posted pro-separatist uh, posts on social media recently showing a distorted map of India. Indian cricketer Virat Kohli also unfollowed the singer following this controversy. Now for more details on this, Shivan has all the details. Over to you, Shivan. Thanks, Him. Of course, you know, these are probably, it's a new low in India-Canada ties and we'll break it down for our viewers one fact at a time. Let's take a closer look at the Khalistan issue to begin with. It's history of violence and how Canada has been harboring extremism. Now, a demand for an independent Sikh state carved out of India is at the heart of the Khalistan issue. The demand dates back to India's independence in 1947 when the idea was pushed forward in negotiations preceding the partition. The demand has surfaced many times through the decades, spiking during the violent insurgency in India in 1970s and 1980s. The violence effectively paralyzed Punjab for over a decade. Now, Canada has been in the picture for as long as the Khalistan issue. As communities from the troubled state of Punjab migrated to the North Atlantic nation, we're of course talking about decades earlier, in 1982, then Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau, who is the father of current Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, declined to extradite terrorist Talvinder Singh Parmar. He declined. Parmar was accused of killing two police officers in Punjab. The overall Canadian response to the Khalistani challenge back then 
was also criticized by Indian politicians, including then Prime Minister of India, Indira Gandhi. Now, Canada too has been at the receiving end of this extremism. It's not just affecting India. Khalistani group Babar Khalsa, led by Parmar, orchestrated the bombing of Air India Kanishka in June of 1985. 330 people died in the crash. Most of them were Canadian citizens. But provocative Khalistani activities continue in Canada. In 2002, a Toronto-based Punjabi language weekly, Sanj Savera, greeted former Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi's death anniversary with a headline that read, urging readers to honour the martyrs who killed the sinner, calling an Indian Prime Minister a sinner and those who killed her, those terrorists, as martyrs. Now, in recent months, with the rise of a pro-Khalistan activist, Amrit Pal Singh, the Khalistan issue regained some traction, simultaneously in India and abroad. Indian High Commission in Canada, Australia and the UK became targets of pro-Khalistan protests. Anti-India demonstrations also rose alongside. In one particular incident from June this year, a parade was organized in Brampton celebrating the assassination of Indira Gandhi. Now, Indian External Affairs Minister S.J. Shankar registered his strong disapproval over the incident. He underlined the requirements of a vote bank politics behind giving space to extremists in Canadian politics. So a lot has happened between India and Canada in the previous day itself. For more on this, we are now being joined by senior journalist Terry Milowski, live from Ottawa, Canada. Welcome to the broadcast, sir. Thanks for the invitation. Right. Happy to see you here, sir. Uh, let's start off with, uh, you know, what's happening between the two nations. And I, there is a pause in trade, there's a pause in trade missions. Uh, High-ranking diplomats have been expelled. It's all happened within a matter of hours. Even a Canadian artist who sympathized with the Khalistan sentiment is, has been, uh, you know, uh, cancelled. His shows has been, have been cancelled in India. How do you see matters going forward from here for India and Canada? Are we, have we seen the lowest or can it get lower from here? Oh, it's going to go lower. I think it's going to get worse before it gets better because uh, both parties have uh, painted themselves into corners. Uh, Prime Minister Trudeau has uh, managed the feat somehow of painting himself in a corner while also putting his head in a noose because he's the one that initiated this uh, by making these charges but without revealing the evidence. Evidence is the key here. This whole theory that uh, India was involved in uh, wiping out, eliminating... Uh, through uh, death squads, supposedly, of deadly diplomats fanning out and uh, uh, murdering uh, prominent Khalistani figures. This originated with no evidence at all, simply because there was a coincidence of three Khalistani leaders in various places around the globe dying within a space of a couple of months. One of them died in a Birmingham hospital in England of leukemia. Well, uh, no evidence there of any sort of murder. But... In the case of Mr. Nijjar, Hadib Nijjar in Surrey, British Columbia, yes, it was a murder. It was a gangland hit, two masked men, they run off the getaway car, is found burning later. Typical for British Columbia, where uh, these kinds of murders do happen almost every weekend. So uh, we have a situation where the Prime Minister of Canada is saying that there's real meat in this. In the, it sounds absurd. There is no evidence for it that anyone knows, but he's saying he believes it. Well, so what is it? What is the evidence that he has? He yeah. cannot survive if he doesn't now put meat on the bones and say, look, I, I've got the goods. I'm not just blowing smoke and causing a ruckus and right. a complete breach of relations, which are already pretty frosty and now are in, a, in a deep freeze. He can't survive without revealing what his information right. is. And then the ball will be in Mr. Modi's court, will it right. not? To say, OK, that's what they've got. What do you say? Uh, and they need to come he, out with some proof to show why it's absurd. Exactly. They need so to provide again, the proof on the basis of which they've made these yes. allegations and claims. Exactly. Absolutely. They can't go forward without that. And so right. uh, you can see the trajectory. If indeed Trudeau does produce whatever he's got, then that puts the, board, uh, the ball in the Indian court. Mr. Modi will have to respond and say why he said it's absurd. He said, because he knows what it is, right? Because right. Trudeau approached him at the G20 in New Delhi and says, by his own account, that he raised this matter with Mr. Modi, uh, quote, in no uncertain terms. So, and there's no way that Mr. Modi would have sat there like a potted plant and let uh, uh, Trudeau off the hook without saying what his evidence was. Absolutely. Uh, can you imagine that he didn't ask 
you know, what are you talking about? What, what's right. your evidence for this outrageous allegation? So right. looking at things Absolutely. within now, Canada next In fact, year. there are some other aspects to this also that we must discuss. Canada is facing a major cost of living challenge as well. Survey published recently showed that in fact 38 to 28 percent lead in public support for the main opposition conservatives over Trudeau's liberals. That was enough to ensure their victory were an election to be held right now. So Trudeau had a major three-fourth cabinet reshuffle as well earlier in July. We saw this. Do you feel that these recent remarks accusing India are a desperate attempt to perhaps woo the NDP supporters? Well, I don't say, say it's all about that, uh, but it's certainly part of it, isn't it? Right. I mean, the, uh, Trudeau is, is in a desperate political situation. Uh, he doesn't have to face an election uh, until next year, maybe even the year after. He could theoretically go with a full five-year term, uh, although four is more normal. But <clears throat> the problem with that theory is that he's not necessarily in control of the agenda because... He depends for support upon a left-wing party, the NDP, New, De New Democrats, and they are led by, guess who, Jagmeet Singh, who is a prominent Khalistani sympathizer throughout his career. So right. it's clear that Mr. Trudeau, at the very least, you can say that he doesn't want to antagonize uh, the NDP and Mr. Singh and risk uh, a, a, a snap election, a sudden election, the exactly. collapse of his minority government, because he can't survive without the NDP. So, and he doesn't want, with these polls, would you go to an early election? I don't think so. He would not want to. So he's in a precarious situation, and he needs to pull something out of the fire. Right. This might be it. That Maybe that's what he's thinking. But we have to see if his evidence will hold up. If he doesn't, I would tell you that he's finished. Exactly. But raising India's name may be too hot for him to handle if he's pulling one out of the fire. Let's see how that pans out for Trudeau, at least. Also, Terry, you know, China's interference in Canada for years has been well known. Uh, Trudeau remained silent on China, had, when, even when China had held two Canadian citizens hostage. Now, Trudeau remained silent even then, but he was quick to take India's name even without providing any kind of proof. Talk to us about the irony of uh, Trudeau's politics and uh, does an accusation on India give him more mileage than naming China back home? It does seem to be a very odd contrast, doesn't it? He uh, it? originally, I mean, his father, uh, Pierre Trudeau, Trudeau, made a name for himself by being one of the early explorers to go to the new red China, to explore it, to make friends with its leaders, and to become really quite an esteemed figure in the early days of communist China. So there's a sort of Trudeau family connection with China that I think is significant here. And I also think there's a sort of Liberal Party of Canada family connection with the Khalistanis, in as much as the Khalistanis have been very effective and disciplined and organized about burrowing into party politics in Canada, about recognizing that Liberals generally have a better chance of, uh, of being elected, uh, and, and, and taking advantage of that familiarity uh, by uh, using their vote bank politics, by going to politicians, they've mastered the art, Canadian politics by going to politicians and say, look, you come to my Vaisakhi parade and you smile and wave and you hustle for votes and you look the other way and you say nothing when the parade floats go by carrying these pictures garlanded in gold tinsel of gun-toting toting martyrs and assassins and mass murderers, to include, by the way, <clears throat> Dovinder Parbar, who you mentioned at the outset, right. the, Air India, the Air India bomber of 1985, who slaughtered 331 people. Now, uh, that family connection with the Khalistanis endures to this day and, uh, and helps the Liberals still at election time. Not that the Conservatives don't also play the game to a lesser degree when they're in power and when they have an opportunity to cash right. in. But the fa fact of the matter is that the Khalistanis have been very effective in getting Canadian politics to work for them. You put all of these factors together and you have some sort of explanation for why China gets treated one way, right. India right. gets treated another way. The NDP and Liberals, they both need each other. That's exactly what's happening. Right. Well, uh, Mr. Terry yeah. Mluski, thank you so much for joining us on World DNA with your insights on this. Thank you. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.